Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, I'm Tori and today I want to chat about some books that I finished recently and then also get into some books that I am going to be making my way through as we get into October and the spooky season. I have a couple of books on here that are, you know, a bit outside of my usual reading preferences, like I have a couple of horror novels, so should be fun. Then of the recent reads that I had, it was kind of a mixed bag in terms of enjoyment. One of them I loved and that's going to be first. We're going to get into that right away because I just need to talk about this book so we're going to get into that. But I do have a very popular recent release on here that I have some mixed feelings on so we're going to get into that as well. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video so let's get started. So first I need to talk about The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. This was a book that I finished back in August. And I love this. I remember not even being that far into this book and just feeling like this was going to be a great read. And I'm so happy that it turned out to be true. It's hands down one of my favorite books that I have read in 2022. If you guys have even been slightly on the fence about picking up The Justice of Kings, I highly, highly recommend that you do so. We have two main characters that we're following. The first is Justice Von Vault, who is He's a lot of different things. He's a man with a lot of authority, a lot of power. He works on behalf of the Emperor and so he along with his court they travel to different places throughout the Empire to make sure people are following the like religion of the land, make sure people are sticking to the laws that the Emperor set forth. Von Vault is our main character but we also have a main character who is this clerk, Helena, and she's this um, 19 year old girl and the story is actually being told from her perspective and I think I've mentioned this already but that is a narrative choice that I I loved so much. I think you by the end of this book you just have such a such a clear picture of who Von Vault is but also who Helena is because you it's almost like you see both of them through the other's eyes and it's just it's so I can't explain it better than that it is just so good you get this look at Von Vault from all these different angles as the book progresses you see how a lot of things that are happening within the empire are starting to shake up the way that he views things and you just feel very up close to him so for him to be the main character but not be the one telling so it's just it's so good I really love that narrative decision and it just I think elevates the story to a level that I was not expecting and then also the atmosphere of this book is really great I think this is something that'll be so perfect to read during the winter time so if you just like want to curl up with something the majority of these scenes are like in the winter <laughs> it's really cold outside so you just get that vivid and atmospheric and cold imagery throughout so much of the book so it, I mean it was great. A plus character work, A plus world building. I also think this book is blending a lot of different genres because it is a fantasy story. There's some great world building happening. Von Vault himself along with his other justices they have their own you know they have their own abilities that they can use but as you keep reading this book is moving in so many different spaces. It's like a detective story on the one hand but then it's also a mystery. It gets heavily political. I think this book is also doing a lot of great things when it comes to a religious order versus the law and who who has the right to uphold the law who is supposed to have all the power and authority and it's this is great I cannot wait for book two this is a series that I will most definitely be continuing when the second book comes out it was amazing and next I finished a book that unfortunately I did not love and that is Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford and this is also book one in a planned series. There were there were a lot of things that did not work for me in this. So this book is also a fantasy and we have this world where this empire where guilds they they control everything. So there are several different guilds. You have a guild for like administration, you have one for agriculture, so on and so forth. Then you have the Hawksburg Guild and they are in charge of transportation for the entire empire. And so we're following the Hawksburg family. We're following Rosamond who's the matriarch and then also her three children. Now the and the entire book is split between their POV. So those four POVs and then there's one more but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil who that POV is but we have five POVs total and I just there came a certain point in this book maybe around like the 60% mark and I was just thinking I don't like any of these characters they were not after a while they just weren't interesting anymore or I'm not sure if they ever were interesting to me but I will say by the end of this book I was just not a fan of this entire family so the two of the kids 
And I mean, I'm saying kids because they're Rosamond's kids, but they're like, they're all adults. Kano, who is the eldest, he is sent south somewhere in the empire. And then Tyretta, who's the only girl in the middle child, she's sent off on her own. And then we have the youngest, Fulrin, who he eventually goes somewhere too, but I'm not going to get into like why he how he gets there or what happens. So we're following those three in different regions of the world and the empire. And Rosamond herself is still in like the midst of everything in the capital where all of the political all the political intrigue and all the corruption and things like that are starting to happen. I felt like by the end of this book I didn't really know anything about the relationship that the different guilds had with each other. I thought that was such a fascinating part of the story that these guilds and you have these guild masters and they have to cooperate and work with each other to get things done but you don't really get to know them so that was one thing I wasn't the biggest fan of by the time the book was over and then also the Hawkspurs I'm, they're supposed to be this really powerful uh, well-respected family and as I'm reading it I just never felt like that even the way that Rosamond is treated while she is in the capital of the empire which is kind of where the story starts she her authority is like not taken seriously she has to repeat herself a lot she has a hard time getting people to do what she asks and i'm just like rosamond could have been any random character in the empire with no no power no authority no rank anything and i would have believed that that was her because she just never came across to me as someone who had all of this authority and her kids didn't either i don't even want to get started on these kids connell the eldest son when his motivations started being revealed later on in the book I'm just thinking to myself like oh my god grow up he was so insufferable he was that character where every time I would see his name at the top of the chapter I would just be like oh here we go again Tyretta was probably the most interesting and her situation I thought was the most interesting but even her character she just never grew on me and then Fulren oh my god he he has to be the he has to be the whiniest character I think I have read in a while it came up to a point where there was someone quite literally trying to save his life and Fulrin's just like no no get away from me and I mean you understand you have to read it you understand why he feels like that but I mean come on you don't have a lot of options right now get over yourself so yeah overall I was not a fan of these characters at all I felt like we could have gotten a little bit more world building in terms of just the guilds and how they operate and interact with each other and I just kept turning pages just to see what was going to happen and see how things would end up and I really just probably should have put the book down next I also have a book here that I did not enjoy and that was Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak. I will say this was really good in the first half. It was, I mean, creepy, so intriguing. I was on board. I was really enjoying this book in the first half. And then when things started getting revealed, as they do in thrillers, like there was a moment when I was just like, what? The climax of the story just really took the book in a different direction for me. I had so many logistical questions like how how do you not how did you not know sort of thing not even not me I'm talking about the main character and then more explanations started coming out and I was just like is this really is this really the direction that we're going in but in this book we have our main character Mallory who is a recovering addict and she is hired to be the live-in babysitter for this family for their son Teddy <laughs> and very early into the job Teddy starts painting some really disturbing pictures and the pictures start getting more disturbing, significantly more disturbing as the, the book goes on. So the whole first half of this book is like Mallory trying to figure out what Teddy is drawing and why and just the pictures and as the book goes on the pictures start getting more detailed. My dislike for this book just really rests in the things that started coming out and as the pieces started to come in, coming together in the story and I can't I can't even allude to what it is because it is really the kind of thing that will literally ruin the entire book. So that's Hidden Pictures. It was spooky in some sections. The pictures were creepy, but just as a story, wasn't the biggest fan. And then next, I finished the big one. I read Babel by R.F. Kuang, which was pretty much everybody's anticipated release for the year and I did like this. Before I get into my overall thoughts on it, I do want to say that I did enjoy this. I liked it. I've never read anything like this that takes language and translation, identity, colonization, and just 
explores it to the depth that R.F. Kuang does in this book. Just that in, its, in and of itself I thought was genius and I did love that aspect of the story. But overall, like upon finishing it, I just, I didn't love it. So Babel is a historical fantasy novel and in it we're following our main character Robin Swift. But the story starts when he is pretty young, like nine or ten years old and he's orphaned and he's taken in by this well-to-do English professor under the condition that Robin studies these languages, applies himself, and one day, you know, the goal is for him to attend Oxford, or more specifically, attend the Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. So that is like the bare bones, very, very basic synopsis. And from there, I don't really know where to come at this story from, because there's a lot happening in this. So there is magic in this book. There is a magic system, if you will, where the students at Babel, when they get into their last year they are introduced to silver working where they take these bars of silver and those silver bars are essentially used to help them help them connect things or things that are lost in translation so once they're connected through the silver bar the meaning behind the word will like make that bar active make it more powerful the magic is not this it's not like a massive massive part of this book it's more so just kind of ingrained in the world and the way that England uses these silver bars and the way that translators use it. I think if you have the idea that you want to pick this up because just the magic in it sounds really cool and that sort of thing, that's not the reason I picked it up but I think if you go into it with that mindset, like maybe don't do that because more so than anything this book is very heavily historical and very focused on academia and languages and translation and I think that was so strong in the first half of this book. I love that. The students at Robin's cohort, they all specialize in various languages. And so seeing them in their lessons and the classes and getting these language lessons, I mean, it really is genius. And you can tell that there was just so much research and work and love put into these characters and this story and the history behind everything. So I really love that. And I do think the themes that R.F. Kuang is juggling in this book are really well done because we have a lot there is we're dealing with colonization and racism and identity and how language and translation whether it's from Asian countries African countries Caribbean countries like how that informs just how that informs everything happening in the book and how England is weaponizing that in order to remain in power and so you really go on this just this really in-depth character arc with Robin throughout the course of the story. So I loved all of those aspects of the book. My interest in this story however really started to fade maybe around the midway point. I loved the first half of this book. I loved getting to know Robin and just seeing him at Oxford but also being in his head a lot about how he is trying to grapple with these with this these experiences that he's having. But I really never felt anything for the other characters in Robin's cohort. By the second half of the book the things that we were learning about translation and languages started to feel more like textbook lectures and not really smoothly incorporated into the story. It just, I just, I wasn't as interested. So by the time I hit maybe like the 300 mark, I was like, how are there still over 200 pages left in this book? I was really starting to feel kind of just like it was a slog almost. And I was, I hated that I started feeling that way. So unfortunately, no one is more disappointed than I am right now but again I liked it overall I liked it I recommend it it was a good book but the pay I don't know if it was the pacing or something it just was not working with me anymore by the time I hit the second half of this book and so when I finished it it wasn't this feeling of oh my god like that was incredible I can't wait to get on camera and talk about this it was more of like a feeling of relief like oh thank goodness this book is over it was just it felt very all-consuming and not always in a great way so I did like it overall I do recommend it I think it is a great read for the fall season and just in general like the themes again that R.F. Kuang is exploring in this book I think is a must read so definitely go check this out I'm excited for you guys to read this if you haven't picked it up already and let me know your thoughts if you have finished it no spoilers in the comments but let me know what you think about this book I finally read and really enjoyed The Passengers by John Mars. This was my very first John Mars novel. I have had The Passengers on my shelf since this book came out and just have been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Finally I read this and I really enjoyed this. It is just so... just the concept is so twisted but also I think just the way that John Mars portrays 
society and social media is completely accurate. This is more like sci-fi dystopian thriller and it takes place in a world where the UK has normalized self-driving cars. There are different levels of self-driving cars. One morning we have these random people who get into their self-driving cars and the, when they get into the cars, the cars are hacked. The doors are locked, windows can't roll down, the computer system on the dashboard is, has been completely hacked, and the hacker tells them that they are gonna die in two and a half hours. The public decides who in the cars they wanna save. And so we're getting perspective from people in the cars, we're getting perspective from the jury who is watching, the whole world is watching, but we're getting perspective from the jury that's kind of like the the leader that's been tasked with choosing who lives and dies, but then we also get the public response. And I mean, it's just, it's so, I'm laughing, but it's like, it's not funny. It's so twisted. You guys know how social media is, how society is. You have all these trends and hashtags starting from this hacking event and people just being entertained by the fact that there are eight lives at stake. So I mean, it was a bit wild. <laughs> This was just the true definition of a page turner. This was so entertaining. And of course the people in the cars are all completely different. You have some a woman who's an immigrant, you have a pregnant woman, you have an elderly person, you have a, an actor. And so as their lives start unfolding and the public starts learning about them, it just, yeah, it becomes like a trial by social media. And it is just so ruthless. And the scary thing is that there are some humorous moments in here, but it's like all overshadowed by this really dark, dark event. And I don't know, it's so it's so Black Mirror, it's not even funny. So if you like something like Black Mirror, read this. Or if you've read this and have never watched Black Mirror, watch Black Mirror. This was a really good first impression of John Mars. I'm so glad I finally picked this up. So definitely go read The Passengers. And now I have a lot of books that I would like to make my way through during spooky season. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, not going to spend too much time on these. But I'm going to start with my current read here, which is The Troop by Nick Cutter. And this is a horror novel. I have just completely moved past my usual reading zone of science fiction and fantasy and picked up horror. But I mean, if you guys have been watching me for a while, I tend to read like sci-fi and fantasy with some darker themes anyway. So the fact that I would just step out and like pick up a horror book is not unusual. I will say that I... I'm not really affected by a whole lot in books there. I have certain things that I just cannot bring myself to read depending on the theme. But for the most part, dark content, dark dark themes in books don't really, I don't know, they don't really impact me like that. I decided to pick up the troop. And yeah, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little disgusted and a little horrified. But so far, this has been an entertaining read. I actually tried to, I am on chapter 11. And I actually tried to pick up the audiobook version and I got several chapters into the audiobook so I made it to like chapter 17 with the audiobook and then came to realize that I have no idea what's going on so I stopped the audiobook and went all the way back to chapter 11. So yeah if you all were wondering yes I still struggle to listen to audiobooks so I'm gonna put that aside for now and just finish the book physically. Um this is entertaining so far again very dark it's pretty disgusting quite honestly but I am enjoying it so far but in this we have it's almost like a crew of I forgot what they're officially called but it's like a crew of boy scouts almost and they're out in the wilderness or in, on this island this remote island with their um, scout master or scout leader and there is this man who is just more like almost like a creature at this point who is just always hungry he has this insatiable hunger that just is never fed he's eating anything and everything and this man makes his way onto the island where the scout master and the boys are and so far i've gotten chapters from the boys and the scout master as this this <laughs> this hungry creature has like invaded their their lives more to come on that but that is the one that i'm currently reading and then also books that i would like to prioritize um, for Halloween in October is Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher. This will be my first book by T. King Fisher. And I remember when Nettle and Bone came out, I saw so many reviews praising this book. All the the comments on it were just glowing, amazing, like this is great dark fairy tale, you should pick this up. And then slowly I started seeing more kind of mixed reactions like, oh well I liked this but not really crazy about the rest of it. So. I've been seeing some interesting mixed responses from this book, but I'm really excited to get into this for myself and just see where I fall on that spectrum. But yeah, this is a dark fairy tale. We have our main character in this, Mara, 
who goes on this dark journey to save her sister. And that's all I know about this. So more to come on this, but th yeah, this is a novella or maybe like a, a novelette. Very short, kind of like read it in one cozy weekend or a day kind of novel. So, and then also here I have two Penguin classics. I'm reading Frankenstein by Mary Shelley for the first time ever, which is very exciting. I don't know why I've never picked this up in my life. I guess this October is the time. So I just started this and no real comments to offer right now but I'm just really looking forward to finally getting into this book for myself for the first time ever but this is the classic story of Victor Frankenstein and following him as he is, has created this monster this creature and we'll see how it goes but I'm definitely in the mood for this so I can't wait to finish it and then oh my gosh and then I have three more here bear with me you guys I have The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du. This one I am so excited for. This is very high priority for October and as we start getting into the fall season. I loved My Soul to Keep, which I read last year. It was one of my favorite things I've read in a while. One of the best books I've read in 2021. And so this is going to be my second book by Tanana Reeve Du and I just cannot wait to get into this. And really all I know about this is that we have our main character Angela who returns to her hometown after I think it's after the uh, death of her grandmother. So this sounds like it's going to be a family horror saga maybe. I don't know what it is. I don't care. I'm just so excited to read it because my last experience with Tanana Reeve Du was excellent. And then I meant to mention this when I talked about Frankenstein in my penguin classics here but I have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Again another one that I'm just surprised that I've never picked up. I did read and love We Have Always Lived in the Castle and so I think it's time that I went back and picked up The Haunting of Hill House. I did watch the Netflix series and that was amazing. I still go back and like rewatch episodes every now and then so really loved um, the show Haunting of Hill House but never read the book so I think it's about time I go pick up the book. And then the last book that I have here that I have started but just have no no real thoughts about as of right now um, is The Chestnut Man and this is also a book that has been on my shelf for a while. This is crime but it's also like Nordic Noir and I love Nordic Noir as a genre you know in terms of like movie and TV. I've watched so many Nordic Noir shows and I love the whole vibe, the atmosphere of those shows like just the gray skies, the cold weather, the storylines are really entertaining so I just cannot wait to get into this either. I think this is going to be perfect as the weather starts getting colder and we'll see where it goes. So that is it for me you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments what you're going to be reading this fall and if you've read any of these books here and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.